Today we're going to be walking through how to create a virtual book library in Notion. This is a place where you can track and take notes of your books by connecting them in one database. In this video, we'll walk through how to set up your original database, basically the gallery view that you're going to see when you open the book library. And then we're going to get into the different views that you can add from there. So a calendar view, a Kanban view, other types of views like that. And finally, we'll go over how I like to take notes on books and how I connect them together once you have already built the database. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is actually open up Notion. Now I'm using the desktop version and go ahead and create a new page. So I'm just gonna go here to private and click add a page. Now from here, you're gonna to wanna to click here and then click gallery, okay? So I like to start off by doing a gallery view because I wanna see the physical books like in their pictures up front. And you're gonna click new gallery because you're not gonna have an existing database most likely. So go ahead and click that and then give it a name like I'm gonna call this YouTube book library so I can keep it separate. And then you can add a little book icon. So we could do a little book icon like that. And this is what you're originally gonna set up with because this is the starter page for the gallery view. The next thing I do is just delete this first section because it has like some content in there and I just need it wiped away. And then this is gonna be your book from here. So let's just type in like Big Potential because that's a popular book that I like. So go ahead and click that. And then um, we're gonna change the properties. So each one of these pages, so if I click out of here, each one of these, I'm gonna move this over here. Each one of these is a book, right? So this is gonna be Big Potential, maybe, this one's called Your Money or Your Life, another classic. So each new thing is gonna be a book in itself. So it's gonna be an object. Now, what we're gonna to wanna to do is change the properties, right? Because I don't need, I don't really care when I created this book in my library. I wanna, I care about the red date. Like when did I finish the book? who's the author, stuff like that. So we're gonna go ahead and set up these properties. So how you go about adding properties and deleting properties is you go to add a property. And you're gonna wanna go to, let's say a date, because I wanna know when it's read. I guess you, you actually could do publication date. It's actually cool that they suggested that. I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna do the, the date that I read it. So I'm gonna do date read. I do like the publication idea though. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and remove these, delete property and delete property, because I just like to start from the beginning. So now we have date red, and then you can go ahead and add all the other properties that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a bunch of properties and we can talk through them. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a genre property here. Now this is gonna be a select. You can make this a multi-select or select. I kind of like multi-select because you might want to add multiple. It might be a finance and a business book. So I'm gonna call this a genre. And then you're gonna go ahead and fill out any categories of books that you read. So we'll do business, finance, self-help, those types of things. And you can go ahead and change the colors of this, but this is just to give you an idea of what you can do. And you can, you know, tag it as business or tag it as business and finance, that kind of stuff. So that's how you go ahead and add those. And if you wanna change the color or anything, you can kind of go in here and say, okay, finance is green. Maybe um, maybe business is brown, you know, that kind of stuff. Maybe self-help is like pink in my mind. And then you can kind of mess around with the colors. I like to add a subtitle as well. So we're gonna go ahead and click the text field because you're gonna have just some text. So I'm gonna do the subtitle. And sometimes I just like to just copy and paste that in there. Sometimes it's nice to know because the, sometimes the title doesn't match what the book's actually about. So it, it helps. Next, let's do a status property. and. I actually like to add this as a select because I don't love the status here that they have you autofill. So I always do the select. Cause I, I think the Kanban board works better and it's more customizable. So I'm gonna call this a status. And that is really to tell you to read and then complete to buy. It's kind of nice to have like a Kanban board. We'll turn this into a Kanban board later. So sometimes I have to read, to buy, 
Um, I'll change these so it's to buy, to read, complete. It's kind of in three stages. You can add other ones as well, um, depending on what you want your Kanban board to look like. But those are the statuses I like to have. Another property I like to have is the author. Now there's an option here. So you could put people, so it's suggesting author here. Now I like to just pick my type because it just makes more sense to me. You have an option here. You can either create this as a text and you type in the author's name which is how I would suggest doing it. Now, if you want to get like above and beyond, you can create another database called your author database. And then you can use a relation to connect your author to your books. However, I will say I did set this up. I don't really use it like ever. I don't know why, like somebody convinced me it was like the right way to do things. I wish I would have just made it a text field because now I've got this whole other database that is like, I don't manage it because I don't really look at authors. Like I get that they read their book and it's nice to know the author, but I don't need two separate databases. So just take it from me and let, I mean, you can, you can do it if you want. If you want to go crazy, do the relation and do the author. But I think it's a little bit of an overkill and I wish I didn't do that. So I'm gonna just do a text field and call it author. And that will just, you can just type in their name. Now, lastly, the most important property in my opinion is the image field. So if we go ahead and click this and do a files and media, you're gonna call this book cover. This is the most important field because it's gonna make your database look pretty when we have it in the gallery view. Now to grab an image, all you do is type the name of the book. Sometimes you have to write the word book after it if it's not a super popular book. Go to images, okay, click this one. Usually it's the Amazon works the best. Right click, save image as, and then you're just gonna call this your money or your life. Just save it into downloads, nobody cares. And then you're gonna use that to put into Notion. So now we go back to Notion and in this book cover, you're gonna click choose file and then you're gonna click your money or your life and it's gonna upload in here and that will store the image and that's what we're gonna use on the front of the cover, basically when you have the gallery view. Now it's also key to add this as the icon. So under this where it says icon, add icon, I go to custom and I do the same thing. I upload the same exact file and that will make it look more cohesive when you have it in the gallery view. And this is the key. Now you'll notice that it still hasn't covered your gallery view. So now we have to edit the gallery view so we can show that image as well. So how we're gonna do that is go to these three dots up here and then we're gonna go to layout under gallery and then you can see we're in the gallery view but instead of card preview page content, we're gonna change that to book cover. And then it starts to look better there but now you're gonna click fit image and then you will actually have a really nice book cover. So if we do the same thing for Big Potential and fill this out properly, it will start to look really nice. So I went ahead and did that and this is what it looks like. So you're starting to get somewhere, right? So now you just keep adding your books and then when you open up your book, just fill out your information and then you can add all your book notes in here and we'll go over kind of how I do it and what my process looks like. But this is how you get it to look really, really nice and have that feel where you can see each book and you can start to see like kind of what the advantages are to having a really nice organized virtual library that organizes all your books, right? Now that we're done with the basics of how to set this up, now I'm gonna show you a couple of views that I like to have personally. So first we're gonna to have to put some dates down on here. So let's just put the date down as I read this today. And let's say I read this a couple days ago and let me fill out some more information. So let's say this is to buy. Well, that's actually to read. Let's just say complete. And let's put this one down as complete. So we can kind of see the rest are fine. You can fill that out as, as you need. They're not needed for the actual view. So now that we have some of the stuff filled out, you can add a calendar view, which I personally really like. So click this plus button and add a calendar. So click this. And then what's really nice is it shows the book on your calendar. So you can kind of go back and be like, okay, how many books did I read this, this quarter, this semester, this year? And it's really easy to kind of scroll through and be like, oh, I read two books in October that kind of stuff. The other view I like besides the gallery view is also um, a view which is more of a Kanban board. So if you're unfamiliar with Kanbans, I love Kanban boards, <laughs> but it basically shows things moving from left to right. Um, let me give you an example. So if you click this plus, 
and do board. They don't call it a Kanban board, but, um, and we can have these. Looks like this is hidden because there's nothing, there's nothing in here, but essentially, let's try to unhide these, is show group. Let's do this one, show group. And we'll move through this complete to, to buy, to read. So then you can move your books back and forth and be like, okay, I wanna buy these two books and maybe one is complete. I hate that it hides this, like it's so annoying. So you can kind of move these around to see how your books are moving. So you can put a bunch in here that you wanna buy, put down a couple that you've already read um, or you wanna read, but you've already purchased. So you, you've already purchased them, now you wanna read them and then move them to complete. So I like to have this because it gives me an idea of what books I'm reading right now, which ones I'm completed, which ones I've, I wanna go shop for or buy for. So I really like this view as well. And the last view is more of a rating view. I've seen someone do this and I also do it as well, is ranking your books. So you're gonna go ahead and add another property and we're gonna do a select. And what you can do is call this rating. And then you'll end up making an emoji. So you use this um, Windows dot key. So there's a Windows button and a dot to pull up some emojis or you can just copy the emoji and just add a star. So you can have one and then you could do another star. And you can do as many as you want, right? So you'll create two, and then you'll just keep creating these until you have whatever your ranking is, right? You can go to five or three or whatever. So then you can rank them and you can create another board view, but based on if we click that board, right? Click here and instead of Let's see, this is board. We're going to group, not by status, we're gonna group by the actual rating. And we'll unhide these again, show group. And let's show this one as well. And now you can start ranking them. So that way you can see which ones have one stars, which ones have two stars, which ones have three stars. This is really nice if you wanna keep track of what you're rating your books as. So we can rename this to rating. And this is status, calendar, and gallery view. So you have a bunch of different options. This is just to show you what you can do as far as views for your library database. You don't have to use them all just to give you some ideas of what you can do. So now that you have an idea of what it looks like to build this library, this virtual library out, let's take a look at mine. So this is how I personally take notes. I'm a physical book person, okay? I read the physical book and then I enter the notes into Notion. So if we just click the first one on here, I this is a book I recently read. If you open this up, you'll see I have strategies from women who've made it. We've got the date read. We've linked it to the author, which I told you already, I barely use that library or that database. Um, I much rather just put, just type it in and then I gave it a ranking. Now you'll notice I'll put some stuff in here. Um, chapter one, I'll usually make the header bigger and then I just put in notes. And I also put in pictures. So you'll see lots of pictures in here. And sometimes I'll even link to other books if it references other books as well. And how you do that is you do a backslash. So if you, let's say I wanted to link this to another book, I would do backslash link, link to page. And you, we can do like, I think I, I have your money or your life. So if I click that, click that. And then all of a sudden that's embedded in your notes. So if I click this, it'll take me to your money or your life. So it's kind of cool. You can start linking these books together. So I'm gonna go ahead and find that and delete it because I, I don't need that book there. But you can start making this like ecosystem of books and linking them all together. Um, you can also filter and see how many books you've read in one year and there's lots of different things you can do. Just to give you another example, this book that I read, Design, this one had a bunch of links in it. So Designing Your Work Slate or your work life, scroll down. It's linked to the paradox of choice, it's linked to mindset, it's linked to grit, peak, drive, making a manager. So if I click this, it's just a little hover, right? Click making of a manager. And then there's some notes on making of a manager, right? 
you can go back. So you can make this like web, you can go to the paradox of choice, scroll down, there's some notes there. And you can kind of get lost in this like wiki of all these different books that you've linked together because they do reference each other and then they build off of each other. So it's very fun to start customizing. You also can see this like drop down of all the titles used. So you can kind of see this rectangle bar on the right here. So it's very fun to start making these um, because you'll start seeing connections that you didn't see because you weren't able to physically like make these notes to each other. But here it's very easily to do that virtually, right? The other thing I like to do is actually filter. So I go into filter and I can add a filter and I have one here on topics so I can filter and just look at, okay, I just wanna look at finance books that I've read, cool. You can also add another filter on date read this year and it will show you all the books that you've read this year. So these are all the ones that I read this year, which is also fun. And then you could just filter on both. You could be like, what are the books I read this year that are finance? Oh, I only read one. It's just very nice to be able to slice and dice and see all this data. Like this would have taken me forever to figure out. I would have had to maybe read back my journals and be like, what, what books I read? And you can lose track of it very easily. So I like the fact that you can filter slice and dice in here, especially because I come from a data science background. So this gets me really excited. Another thing I wanted to show you guys is how to do a linked view of a database. So I have a health page, right? So we're completely outside of where my library was. And if I wanna link some of my health books in my health page, I don't wanna to have to re-enter all the information. So you can actually do a link to view. So you do backslash linked view of database, click this and then enter the database you want. So let's just say it's this library one. And then you can change it to a gallery view and then add a filter on let's say health. And then bam, there's your link to view of your library database. So if you wanna to go to it, you can click that, but at least it's, it's completely filtered and separate. So if you go back to library, it's not filtered on, so let's go ahead and get rid of this filter. Um, it's not filtered on health books here, but on my health page, it's filtered on health books, which is really convenient because if you're on some other pages and you just wanna see this same database just filtered in a different, different way, you could do a linked view on a database. I don't see a lot of people talking about it. I love that. I do the health one on my health page. I do the finance one on my finance page, and it's really nice to have those kind of views. Hopefully this gives you guys a good idea of how to build a virtual library with a notion, a couple of ideas when it comes to properties or views or linked databases as well. Now we did take a peek into my career forward book notes throughout this video. So I will link that video up here because I did a full review on that book and I wrote the video based on the notes that I took from the book. So hopefully it gives you an idea of how I used some of those notes to ended up creating a video out of them. It just streamlines the process of creation when you have these book notes available to you. So I will link that up here and in the description below if you wanna check that out. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.